When you were younger, did you ever play the game, one of these things is not like the others? Where you'd have to spot the item in a set that was somehow different from its companions? That's what this third week of Advent always reminds me of. This one thing that's not like the others. Visually, this week stands apart, with its pink candles standing alone in a row of purples. It even gets its own name, Gaudete Sunday. Latin, of course, meaning rejoice, and so the theme of this week is joy. But here's another place that this week feels different from the other three in Advent. This week is the only one where the focus seems to be on an emotion rather than a virtue. After all, hope, peace, and love, while often accompanied by adjacent emotions, are not emotions in and of themselves. While one can feel hopeful, hope itself is a gift of faith, trusting that God has a greater future good in store for us. Peace can and does move about with feelings of relaxation and tranquility, but it speaks to wholeness and restoration, states of being rather than emotions. And love, the final week of Advent, is an act of will, totally independent of any feelings of affection that we may associate with it. That's why it's possible and commanded to love everyone, including our own worst enemies and our anonymous neighbors all the way across the world, unknown and unmet. We can still want what is genuinely best for their souls, even while experiencing feelings of anger or indifference, a seeming paradox that is the burning heart of love. But joy, joy feels different, and it's easy to substitute the word for things that seem like synonyms, words like happiness or you even pleasure. Can you stand Rocky? Yeah. All right, you got the bottom? Up the top, go ahead and start walking it towards the back. Up you go, up you go, up you go. But as C.S. Lewis once said, joy, in my sense, has indeed one characteristic and one only in common with happiness and pleasure. The fact that anyone who has experienced it will want it again. I doubt whether anyone who has tasted it would ever if both were in his power, exchange it for all the pleasures in the world. But then joy is never in our power, and pleasure often is. Joy is never in our power, and pleasure often is. I think that what Lewis is touching on is the fact that pleasure, based as it is in our bodies, is fleeting and imperfect. It's easily disordered, and subject to our brokenness and ignorance. But joy, a gift as it is from the Holy Spirit, is perfect and directs us to holiness, directs us to God. Joy is found in loving God, in saying to Him and meaning it sincerely, Thy will be done. Oh, but such surrender is so difficult for our rebellious and stubborn hearts. Submerging our will, our wants entirely in God's is terrifying and it's just too big. That's why I think Lewis says joy is never in our power because the effort needed to wholeheartedly surrender to God takes supernatural assistance that is entirely outside of our control. The good news is that such assistance is always there, offered freely and abundantly, and if we take even a tiny movement towards accepting it, grace rushes in us and around us and makes the impossible possible. For me, I've been trying to cultivate surrender and the accompanying joy by slowing down. I've still got so far to go, and rarely am I able to put aside my irritation or pride in the heat of an angry moment. But when things are easier and calm, I try to stop, 
and say with all the honesty I can muster, Thy will be done. Sometimes the promptings I feel in my heart in response are along the lines of, imagine how much better you would feel if you stopped mindlessly scrolling through your phone and went for a walk. Or, washing and putting away a load of towels would be a blessing for your family. And then I get the choice to surrender and obey or not without fail following the suggestions of that small voice in my heart results in well not always happiness or pleasure because staying on top of the laundry has always been a struggle for me and i know i spend way too much time on my phone but i experience something deeper in me something that isn't easily expressed in words that is the joy that is outside our power to conjure or even properly articulate. Other times, the response to my fumbling attempts at surrender is simply a prompting to fully experience the moment before me, to enter into the little slice of life that is unfolding right now without holding it at arm's length to notice the way the sunlight is flooding the rooms of the house, or to listen to the way the kids are laughing together, to stop and realize that every second of my life, God is with me, loving me, surrounding me with grace and protection and infinite gifts. <laughs> In those times, I get a glimpse that surrendering to God, that wanting His will and wanting mine to be in union with it, brings an experience of life that I wouldn't exchange for all the pleasures and happiness in the world. Five, four, three, two, one. And so, Joy truly is one of those things that's not like the others. In a world of fleeting happiness and pleasures that often disappoint, joy remains steadfast, always pointing us to our true home. Christmas.